I do a lot of laser hair removal treatments. I mean a lot. And most of the time, a lot of my patients come in because they have excessive body hair. And my patients always ask me, Dr. D, why am I so hairy? So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about excessive body hair. What's normal, what's not normal, when to see your doctor, and some of the things that you can do to improve this particular situation. So stay tuned for the video. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. D. I'm a board certified internal medicine physician practicing internal and aesthetic medicine in Northern Virginia. Welcome to my channel where we discuss topics related to women's health. So before we dive into the topic of excessive body hair, we need to talk a little bit about different types of hair. So when it comes to hair, we're talking about two different types of hair. We're either talking about vellus hair or we're talking about terminal hair. Vellus hair tends to be thin, short, and is not pigmented versus terminal hair that tends to be long, coarse, and has a lot of pigment in it, all right? So that's how you differentiate between vellus hair and terminal hair. So how do we go from vellus hair to terminal hair? Well, the secret ingredient here is androgens. And androgens are basically hormones like estrogen, testosterone, progesterone. In the presence of androgens, your hair can go from being vellus to being terminal. Now, there are some parts of the body that have androgen sensitive hair and other parts of the body that are androgen insensitive. So for example, hair on your eyebrows or your eyelashes or vellus hair, like the peach fuzz hair that some people have on their face, that particular hair is androgen insensitive. So no matter what happens with the androgens in your body, it's not gonna change, right? However, hair in the axilla or the underarm area or in the pubic area is androgen sensitive. So with low levels of some androgens, you can have the hair in those areas go from vellus hair to terminal hair. Hair growth on the face, the chest, the abdomen, and the back tends to require a little bit higher amount of androgens in the body. And hair in those areas is typically associated with male hair growth. Now, if a woman has androgen excess, she could have hair growth in these areas that have that we discussed that have more of a male pattern hair growth, all right? And so if your androgen levels are elevated as a woman, you'll have hair growth in these areas However, you're gonna have hair loss on your scalp, and we'll talk a little bit about why that happens later on in the video. It's also important to understand that genetics plays a huge role in how much hair you're gonna have on your body. So if your father or your mother tends to, be, uh, to have more hair, then you might have more hair. Another thing that plays a role is ethnicity. So in patients or in people who are of South Asian or Mediterranean heritage, those groups tend to have more hair on their body than other groups. So what is normal hair throughout your lifetime? When you're born, you usually are going to have vellus hair everywhere on your body. Once you hit puberty, which in the United States tends to be earlier, so between the ages of 9 and 12, you're going to start to notice terminal hair in the underarm area or axilla and in the pubic area. When you become pregnant, you have elevations in your estrogen levels, so you might notice more hair in the pubic area and in the axilla or the underarm area, but for some women, they might also notice that they have hair on their abdomen, and this is due to a little bit of an elevation in the estrogen levels. When you hit menopause, you have a decrease in estrogen in your body, and so testosterone will be the dominant hormone in your body, and during that time, women tend to develop hair on their face, especially in the chin and the lip area. That's normal hair growth throughout your lifetime. So when is excessive hair on the body abnormal? This brings us to the topic of hirsutism. So what is hirsutism? Hirsutism is basically an excess, an excess, oh, 
hirsutism is defined as androgen dependent excessive male pattern hair growth on a woman this should not be confused with hypertrichosis which is excessive hair that is not related to androgens it is a condition that is seen in 10 percent of women in the united states that's a lot of women and I didn't realize this until I started doing these laser hair removal treatments and a lot of my patients have hirsutism. But I digress. Hirsutism is associated with acne and also hair loss, also called androgenic alopecia. Now, sometimes your androgen levels can get so high that they cause something called virilization. And basically what virilization is, it's when your androgen levels are so high that they cause other symptoms associated with elevated androgens, such as increase in muscle mass, deepening of your voice, increased libido, and other symptoms related to that. In that particular situation, it's really important to see a doctor, especially if the hair growth comes really fast and it's associated with these particular symptoms. When does hirsutism start? Um, it can start as early as puberty. So my youngest patient with hirsutism is 12, but it is more commonly seen in patients in their 20s, 30s, and 40s. This is the Ferryman Galway scale for hirsutism. A score of 1 to 4 is given for 9 areas of the body. A total score less than 8 is considered normal. A score between 8 and 15 indicates mild hirsutism and a score greater than 15 indicates moderate or severe hirsutism. Hirsutism is usually associated with PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome, but it doesn't always have to be. In some situations, people or patient, women can have hirsutism that is associated with elevations in their testosterone levels, but is not associated with other symptoms of PCOS, such as polycystic ovaries or infertility or um, having it affect their menstrual cycle. So you can have patients who have hirsutism, but they have normal levels of testosterone in their body. In that case, it's considered idiopathic. Another group of patients are people who have hirsutism that's associated with elevations in androgens, but the androgens are not coming from the ovaries, so they're coming from another source or from the periphery. Usually in this case, this is associated with patients who are obese, um, and when you're obese, you have elevations in cholesterol and cortisol, which are precursors to testosterone. So if you have elevations to precursors of testosterone, then the, there's a good chance that you're going to develop testosterone and other derivatives down the line, but it's not coming from your ovaries. Other medical conditions that are associated with hirsutism include hypothyroidism, Cushing's disease, and some tumors can also be associated with hirsutism. Also, there's some medications that can cause hirsutism, such as certain seizure medications or medications that are supposed to help with hair growth. If you have hirsutism, there's a good chance that when you get pregnant, your hair or excessive hair is going to get worse. Honestly, what doesn't get worse when you get pregnant? <laughs> But yes, you're going to have more hair on your face and on your body when you get pregnant. So when do you see your doctor about hirsutism? Uh, personally, I think if you have any excessive hair on your body that's in a male pattern like we discussed, so on your face, your chest, your back, your abdomen, it's important to see a doctor to just make sure that you rule out other causes that could be associated with hirsutism. Now, when you've seen your doctor and your doctor has ruled out medical reasons why you might have hirsutism, then it's important to tackle the other reason why you might have hirsutism, which is hirsutism that's related to obesity. So in that case, it's really important to make sure that you do lifestyle modifications, such as losing weight. And losing weight is usually going to include you modifying your diet. I always recommend a ketogenic diet or intermittent fasting 
for my patients because this is really good for helping with insulin resistance in these particular patients. Another thing that's really important is making sure you do a lot of cardio-based exercises and not weight-based exercises, and I can do a video later on talking about why that's the case. And in terms of managing the hair, we have multiple options on the market. You could shave the hair, you could do waxing, um, you could also do laser hair removal, which is what I do a lot in the office, and also you could do electrolysis to help with managing the hair. In terms of medications, um, if your hirsutism is associated with any medical causes, then you and your OB or your endocrinologist are going to come up with a treatment plan that will probably include medications such as oral contraceptions to help regulate your hormones. And in some instances, you might be put on medications such as metformin or medications such as pernolactone. Again, this is something that you're gonna discuss with your physician and come up with a plan that works best for you. So I hope that video was helpful. If you want me to do a more in-depth video on different parts of this video, because this was more of an overview, then let me know in the comments below. But if you found this video useful, please share it with somebody that might find it useful and subscribe to the channel for more videos on topics related to women's health. I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Bye.